the third part of the session today is focusing on preparing a business plan. So there is actually a discussion at the moment in the business community on whether you need a business plan or you don't. So generally, even if you look at the at any business plan of a startup, you're going to see this kind of thick-ish book of at least about maybe 20 or 30 pages, and sometimes they go up to 70, 80 pages that describes the business in uh, a fair amount of detail. And here's the problem with that. Not everybody has time to read for your business plan, let alone to read it carefully and understand it, especially uh, people who are screening projects or investors. They're busy people. They get hundreds of uh, entrepreneurs approaching them every day. They have to screen projects quickly. So uh, the question is to start with whether you need a business plan. So as we're talking about uh, the different sections of a business plan, etc., uh, keep that question in mind and we're going to get back to it towards the end. So uh, first of all, where does this come uh, in the process of entrepreneurship? Well, first you start with the initial preparation. You come up with ideas. You filter the ideas, which of the ideas are uh, relevant to the market, which of them are economically viable, meaning we can, if you're producing something, produce cheaply and sell with a good margin, etc. Can you get protection of that idea, intellectual copyright? And then number four, you get to make a business plan, and after that you get to look for funding. So the business plan comes before looking for funding or reaching out to investors. Uh, so first we're going to talk about the business plans as part of the lecture and then in the next one we're going to talk about reaching out to investors, venture capital, um, angel investors, etc. So first of all, when you're starting a business plan, consider what's your business model. There are different types of business models, but some of the uh, main questions that you're going to have to think about are, what is our project, what is our service, how does it create value for people? So how does it give them, for example, it might be something that they already have at a cheaper price, or it might be something that they don't have access to, or it might be something that uh, gives them uh, a, a good uh, a way of doing something in a different way. Uh, who are the customers? Who are the clients? So if you don't have clients, you don't have a business. Businesses are based on their clients and their user base. Number three, how are you going to promote your product or service to them? So is this something that they already know about or is this something that you're going to have to educate them about? Are you going to do this online or are you going to hold workshops or are you going to focus on um, a marketing campaign, for instance, a guerrilla marketing campaign on the streets with people handing out flyers, etc. Number four, how are you going to generate revenue? How are you actually going to make money? Where does the money come from? There might be multiple sources of revenue. There might not be one source of revenue. Uh, and number five, what are your strategic objectives and how are you going to achieve them? So how do you see that business developing one year from now, three years from now, five years from now? What are your goals? What are your milestones? What type of company do you want to be? If one day you get big enough to go and launch an IPO, what kind of, of, of a vision do you have for that business? So why do you need to write out uh, a business plan? Well. Usually, uh, we get these three reasons quoted. Number one, you articulate your vision for the business. Number two, you document how you plan to solve the key challenges that you're going to face. And number three, you pitch your business idea to potential investors based on that plan. So, there are different types of people, different groups of people that are going to read your business plan. And these might be sources of, of funding, potential partners and investors. But they also might be, and keep that in mind, skilled employees. So in the early stages of the startup, if you're getting your team together and, and you don't have enough people or you need someone who has a specific skill set, you maybe go and meet someone at an event that has the right skill set. Or maybe, uh, let's say you, you, you uh, have a friend of a friend that gets introduced to you. And then you talk them into your startup, you tell them how, about how great it is. They might often ask you, do you have a business plan? Can you send it over to me so I can have a look at the startup? So skilled employees that you're looking to hire in the early stages might be interested in your business plan. And finally, potential joint ventures. Um, if, you're, if you're looking at, um, at uh, partnering up with uh, someone else for a joint venture. Now, when you're writing a business plan, make sure you consider, first of all, uh, 
your own viewpoints? Does it fit your goals, your aspirations, your skill set, etc.? Number two, consider the clients and the audience's viewpoint. So does it make money from a client's perspective, a customer's perspective to, to spend money on your service or on your product? Uh, and this is a crucial viewpoint to consider. Number three, the investor's viewpoint. So how much money do they need to invest? Uh, what do they get in return for that investment? How much profit do they make? When are they gonna make return on that investment? How much investment are they gonna get uh, 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 dripping down in the future being generated for your business? And also number four, the partner's viewpoint. So especially uh, if you're doing something more complex in the services sector, uh, you might consider partnering with a number of other companies. They might be more established. What are the benefits uh, for these companies to partner with you? Now, the business plan usually has, uh, well, roughly has four types of parts that I'm gonna talk to you about very briefly. So first we're gonna look at the uh, introductory part that you can see here on that slide. Then we're gonna move on to the analytical part, the conceptual part, and finally the operational part. So I'm gonna go through them one by one briefly. So the introduction part has a few key elements. First, and probably the most important, you have the executive summary. So every time somebody doesn't have enough time to read the business plan or another type of document, they read the executive summary. That's gonna be the most read part of your business plan. So make sure your executive summary is concise, make sure that it's on point, make sure that it's well written, and also make sure that it's written in a very positive tone. So uh, the, the, the executive summary is not necessarily written the way that, for instance, you might write an academic uh, abstract or an academic essay uh, for your business degree. The executive summary might be written from the perspective of encouraging the readers to get on board with the project. Uh, of course, you have to give a brief introduction to your enterprise or your business. You also have to articulate these three elements, your mission, your vision, your goals. And these three are well articulated uh, in a separate kind of, uh, in separate sections of the plan on, on three separate lines. You could highlight, for instance, the words and then you could bring the attention of the readers to them. Uh, finally, you have to make sure that you're pointing out your competitive advantage. So how, what, what makes you unique on the market? How do you compare against your competition? Why should your company uh, exist and succeed in the market? What makes it different? What makes it unique? What brings the value proposition to potential users, investors, etc.? Uh, and also, of course, you have to describe briefly the goods and or services that you offer and your plans for uh, the future development of the company. The second type of content that you include in a business plan um, usually has to do with the following elements. So first of all, you identify the business opportunity or the social opportunity. Then you provide evidence explaining how or why the opportunity is viable. So this might include things like market research, you show what your user base is currently or what your potential user base is, etc. It might have to do with also things like trends. It might have to do with the economic and political conditions that are changing. Uh, so you might want to jump onto a wave uh, like an emerging market. Um, and, and this is something that you need to show and provide evidence for. It's not just something that you can mention and uh, leave right there. Uh, number three. We have to present research results from industry and market analysis. So again, uh, hammering on the same point, you need to be providing more or less evidence for these things. Uh, number four, uh, you need to show that you have a good understanding of your competition. So you need to demonstrate that you understand the different uh, levels of competition that you have. You need to understand, uh, you need to show that you understand how your product is positioned on the market. You need to understand how you compare in terms of price, in terms of quality, in terms of the actual service that you provide. So understanding your competition is absolutely crucial. It's one of the uh, most asked questions when you go and pitch. If you don't, if you if you don't explain it explicitly, you're going to get asked, "Well, who else does that?" 
What are the other companies that do that? What's different about your company? So, um, of course, you have to consider also barriers for entry in your business. So in different sectors, that's very different, uh, especially in sectors where you have a huge kind of physical component. You might need more capital in order to enter the market. In sectors that are more service-based, uh, you might need more of the know-how or you might need a good team rather than a huge uh, amount of physical uh, property or capital. And finally, you have to make sure that you understand the size and segmentation of the potential market. So understanding the market, understanding the trends is good. This is something that we just spoke about before and that forms part of, of, of where the opportunity is emerging. But also make sure that you're showing an understanding of how big the market is, of what percentage of the market can you actually realistically um, uh, uh, engage and, and, and turn into your, your potential users or clients. And also, what's the segmentation of that market? So in terms of demographics, are these people usually from, uh, for instance, Europe or Asia, or which region of the world do they live in? Uh, how old are they? Are they between, I don't know, say 20 and 30, or are they in their 50s? Um, and how and why does, that, does your product fit their uh, needs? So, in the, well, the, these kind of, uh, types of information I fit into a label called the analytical part of the sport. Um, you, you can restructure your plan accordingly uh, and then give it a more uh, fancy name uh, for each part. Now three, the conceptual part. Uh, this is more of a, of a description of your concept, the reasons, the motivations that you have for starting the enterprise, uh, describing of how and why that, that opportunity uh, is actually relevant to you and how and why it's relevant to trends, opportunities, or needs. That's something that I kind of uh, covered in the, in the previous part as well. So uh, these are really different types of, of information that you could restructure accordingly, um, depending on, on how you approach the business plan more specifically. Uh, finally, the operational part of the business plan. Uh, this is something that's also very important to investors. That we're gonna um, uh, uh, emphasize later in the lecture as well, investors invest and people, people invest in people, not necessarily just in ideas. So when you're thinking about the operational part, you need to cover the key functional areas, uh, the implementation process, the people that are on your team, the way that you, uh, you, you collaborate or the way that you work together, uh, marketing, how are you promoting that product, where are you promoting that product, etc. finances, uh, what kind of money have you put in the business to date, how many, uh, say items have you sold to date, what kind of return have you made on these items, what's your margin, what's your production cost, uh, where are you selling these items, etc. Uh, how much money do you need from the investors, what are you going to use that money for. So you need to cover the finances, you need to also make projections for the future, say year, two years, five years, even if they're not precisely accurate, you need to give uh, the readers of your business plan a rough idea of where uh, it's projected to go at least and also other internal functions uh, that have to do with uh, the operations of the business. Uh, now, when you think about the market opportunity, um, we kind of spoke about it a little bit before, but uh, you really need to make sure that you know who are your customers or your users. Um, so if you're selling it to the end user, if you're selling it to people, of course, that might include what I mentioned before, geographic description, demographics, etc. But if you're doing a B2B model, Make sure that you're clear on what the company profiles are. So what kind of companies can you sell your service to or your product to? It's not necessarily end users that you might target only. Uh, then second, you need to also be clear on what segment of the market, what niche of the market are you going to target. So are you designing a high-end product and service that's going to be more expensive and provide higher quality uh, 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 service or value to the end users? Uh, or are you focusing on, say, the mass market? Uh, are you focusing on taking uh, a smaller amount of margin from a larger amount of users? Um, and what percentage of that market do you uh, expect to penetrate or acquire? Also, make sure that there are other niche, uh, that make sure that you know of other kind of niche types of markets in your uh, industry. So it might ne not necessarily be something as simple as low or as simple as high. It might be, say, companies that 
uh, operate near the coast and have to do with uh, uh, shipping items or something like that. So uh, it might be a certain type of company, not necessarily uh, kind of high or low end uh, or kind of something simple like that. Uh, so you also have to make sure uh, to explain why do customers need and why will they be willing to purchase your products and services? So what makes the value proposition good for uh, potential customers? How are you gonna price your products and services? So that's absolutely key, especially uh, because that's where the investor gets to see what's the margin that they make on each item. Um, and um, w w will you be the low cost provider or provide value added services at a higher price? If so, Along the business chain, if you're, for instance, if you're providing B2B service, um, services might be at the more expensive end, but if you're providing B2B, for instance, uh, a product, then you might be selling uh, at the lower end to other businesses, and then they might be adding extra value to the products that you're selling, so you might be further down the value uh, chain. In either case, you should make sure that uh, you know how much do you have to pay per item or for a certain service to be delivered and how much do you charge for that service or for that item to be delivered and then what's the margin that you make in the middle. Um, now, is your market likely to grow? You need to have an idea where the market is going and why is it going in that direction. So is it, for instance, if you're looking at, I don't know, children's products in China, is it because we've changed the one-child policy to a two-child policy and now we have more children, so the market is growing? Or is it, is it some other reason in whatever industry you might be thinking of, of, uh, of innovating? And uh, how can you increase your market share over time? So businesses are interesting to investors when they are scalable. If you cannot scale a business, investors are not as interested in it because the business can't grow. So uh, an investor is always interested in something that can open more branches, uh, offer new services, get a larger share of the market, etc. In any case, the market opportunity is what kind of makes or breaks the, the uh, viability and the, um, well, the, the, the necessity for your business to exist and thrive. So when you're uh, choosing what type of, uh, of service uh, slash product or, or model to use, uh, obviously you have to decide whether you're working B2B, B2C, or both. Uh, that's a very simplistic kind of comparison between the two. Um, obviously there, there's kind of uh, things that you, you already know in one of the companies uh, is your client and the other is the end user. but. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that there are other implications of that down the line. So for instance, if you're doing B2B and, uh, and the, the company is your end user, you need to focus on the relationship that you have with the company rather than the product itself. Um, because say if you're selling something online on, I don't know, Amazon or Taobao or whatever, you sell something, you get the money, you put it in your pocket, deal done. But if you're working with a company that wants to uh, subscribe to your product and that wants to sign a one-year contract, two-year contract, even if it's for something simple. So think of all the supermarkets, think of all the uh, the fast food chains, they're getting uh, raw products, they're getting vegetables, beef, etc. They're not signing these on a deal-by-deal -deal basis, they have a one-year supply contract, two-year supply contract, etc. So it's the relationship in the B2B model that matters most. Uh, and it's also a long-term uh, engagement here. So uh, there's a lot more kind of trust and, uh, and, uh, and relationality in the B2B models as compared to the, the B2C models. Of course, that's kind of changing a little bit with the, with the, uh, the rise of, uh, of, of products turning into services, subscription models, et cetera, but uh, keep it in mind as a general point. Um, also, of course, there's online business models that are becoming increasingly popular. So you might be thinking of selling your products or services on an online platform. You might be thinking of subscription that I've been hammering about um, in the past couple of sessions. You might be even thinking about things like live streaming, uh, things like promoting your products with uh, uh, kind of young and popular vloggers. Uh, you might be thinking of establishing a fan base, fan pages, uh, whatever it might be, Facebook, Weibo, whatever you might choose to, to establish here and, and uh, make sure you gather a fan base for your product. Uh, you might also think of 
uh, things like freemium. So for instance, offering basic online services for free, if you're doing something like, I don't know, education, you might offer a free lecture or a free uh, series for people that want to check it out. And after that, if they like it, then they subscribe and then they pay for the rest of your service. Uh, there's endless uh, types of, of, of uh, kind of varieties of business models, but in either way, in either case, uh, kind of you have to uh, you have to make sure on what your business model is, how it generates revenue, and what makes this business money. So, uh, we started with the question on uh, whether you should prepare a business plan, and there are people who are actually arguing that it's not necessary to prepare a business plan because it's too time consuming, because it's an outdated mode of setting up a business, because nobody has the time to read it, etc. Now, I can't make that decision for you. I can't tell you whether you have to prepare a business plan or you don't have to. That obviously depends on a lot of things. If you're getting funding from uh, someone who has a personal relationship with you, then they might not be interested in a business plan. If you're thinking of approaching venture capitalists, then you probably must get a, a business plan done because they're gonna wanna have a look at it. Um, either case, in either case, uh, keep two things in mind. So. The first one is the elements of a business plan are things that you should know uh, like, like the back of your hand basically. So uh, if somebody is, is talking to you about the business and they just ask you, wait, so can you stop for a minute and tell me how much is your, is your production cost, how much is your margin, uh, what are your sales channels, who are you partnered with? These are things that you should know off the top of your head essentially. Um, so that's the first thing that I want to I wanna, uh, kind of emphasize for you. And the second one is, in either case, you need to prepare a pitch deck. So a pitch deck is uh, a short presentation of uh, around, so it depends, but it might be 10, 20, sometimes even up to 30 slides sometimes. But uh, the point is, it's a short presentation that emphasizes the key points and the key elements of the business that somebody can uh, have a look through fairly quickly.